the heavy planet free. Just an open-hearted gift from myself uh, to anybody that can get a laugh from that or might cheer you up a little bit. Uh, well, where is the book set? Where is Earthistan? What is Earthistan? Earthistan, uh, 50 years ago, when this story is set, is the most free zone on the planet. Uh, the Greek islands, wonderful scene in the late 60s. Yeah, I got a whole book on that called Yearning for Earth Legs, all set in the Dodecanesis, the Greek islands. Then it, uh, uh, forget the mainland of Greece, put an X over that, that's not Earthistan. And uh, then you move up to uh, Turkey, uh, put an X over that to Iran. No, no, no. So from the Greek island, you hop over to Afghanistan. The phantasmagoric, hashy-saturated heart of Earthistan and the Hashish Trail. Yeah, Afghanistan, Pakistan, especially up in the Northwest Frontier where a lot of the book is sat, Shitral, and uh, India, all over India, just a huge subcontinent, you know, glaciers in the north, rainforests in the south, and Nepal, yeah. Earthistan favorite zone, Sri Lanka, and Maldive Islands in the Arabian Sea. That's Earthistan. And back in the day, uh, this, you know, 52, 53 years ago, 68, 69, when this whole story is sad. Uh, yeah, freedom. And uh, the, the road was open. Oh, wow. Uh, that, the Hashish Trail uh, ran through that. And uh, I have my Afghan uh, a girlfriend. She helps me fact check everything. And thank you, Fatima, for marking up the Hashish Trail. I know this is backwards uh, in the video, but you're dualistic perception has been more than backwards your whole life so you could just hold a mirror up to that you can see india <laughs> well maybe i'll point it out to you india over here okay and uh, uh, uh backwards across the hashish trail you go to pakistan afghanistan and then ooh, iran <laughs> turkey mm, ouch and uh well, there is a little little nib down there. That's Cappadocia. There's a main scene there. And where is... Okay, that's the trail. But where is Earthistan? It's kind of like... Uh, it's kind of... Well... Uh, anyway... Good. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, thank you, world. Well, okay. Yeah, the point is the road was open. Thank you, Fatima. The road was open. Uh, you know, there was no ayatollahs or, you know, these conservative mullahs, you know, suppressing every kind of sex and joy and erotica. Yeah, that country was open. Yeah, it was the Shah there. I loved Americans. Well, the Americans set him up, didn't they? Yeah, the CIA put him in there, so uh, the Iranians couldn't uh, make use of their own oil. Yeah, British Petroleum put the hard word on the CIA, and they took over the country there. So, yeah, it's just a breeze to get through there. And, there were, you know, in Afghanistan, it was a free country. It was a kingdom, you know, quite popular king, and he just played the Russians and the Americans off each other and got free roads built by them throughout his country and you know hippies loved them nobody was getting their heads chopped off <laughs> you know it was pre all that all that uh terrorism you know well let's talk about the main characters uh in order of appearance would be kipling the grandson of rudyard kipling the famous British novelist. Uh, he's 17 years old. He's hitching around Earthistan. 
who is he? He's trying to find out who he is, uh, what he's up to. Uh, he's a brilliant writer, like his grandfather, an artist, and but he doesn't want to mix with uh, you know commercial book trade and copyrights. He just wants to go from hippie scene to hippie scene with a big scrapbook of stories and tell his stories. So uh, he goes up into uh, the northwest frontier. The story starts in Peshawar, a main town on the Old Silk Road and the modern road through there. Uh, King Sharif, uh, also 17, he's the ruler of Mustuj, a kingdom in the northwest frontier. This part of the book is set where Rudyard Kipling made his story The Man Who Would Be King and the film starring Sheen Connery. Uh, remote tribes and uh, then Sphinx, major character, 32-year-old Egyptian from Alexandria, uh, running the uh, you know west coast uh, of the united states best lsd laboratory brotherhood and sisterhood of the shamans and he's a hashish hunter he met uh, uh, kipling and king sharif up there in chitra looking to buy the world's best hashish called assassin hashish originally produced and seeded by hashish Shan, the assassin warlord of persia in the 11th century then uh, the characters shift down, as the story does, to Afghanistan. Peace Ali, major character. He's a charismatic dwarf who runs the Peace Ali Hotel. Uh, many of the 300,000 Westerners who crossed uh, met Peace Ali and enjoyed his uh, <laughs> hotel. Had LSD printed on the menu. Really? And uh, Peace Ali's first cousin, Aladdin, runs a uh, tea house and bakery in the bazaar in Kandahar. Major character. And uh, then their other cousin, Bay, runs the Bayzad Hotel <laughs> in Herat. So three main Afghan characters. Pasha, a mystery person. Nobody knows where he's from. But he's a prodigy, he's an artistic prodigy. Uh, he's got a best-selling book out, The Hippie History of Hashish. He's just coming off a book reading tour in Amsterdam. And there's a thread in the story of him uh, in a uh, VW van driving to Munich and then flying on to Istanbul. Pasha, yeah, Safo, main character. She's a uh, 32. Uh, she's a uh, Goliath. She's a uh, Amazonian, a uh, uh, lesbian boxer from Brooklyn. <laughs> yeah, and she's on a pilgrimage to Lesbian Island, uh, just north of Potmos. Yeah, you can still go there right now, full of lesbians. So she, she went over there. There's some minor characters: Rasta, 14-year-old runaway Jamaican, uh, in Matala in the hippie catacombs of Matala. She's a major character in that chapter. Then you have Silk, a hashish dealer from London, his girlfriend Foxy, a runaway from the Christiania hippie commune in Copenhagen. Mwang Bang Trang, 17-year-old uh, hippie, adventurous, seductress. Yeah, in the uh, she appears in southwest Turkey in the freaky natural setting of Cappadocia. Finally, Zambar in Kandahar lives on a pile of rubble, a collapsed building. He's got his hookah up there, and he's an Islamic yogi, Zadu. Yeah. Well, those are the main characters. Now, the flow of the story uh, it starts out in Peshawar. Uh, a main town between Kabul and New Delhi. And uh, right away it goes up to Shitra in the most remote tribal areas. Very difficult to get there. Our original character Kipling, lucky to uh, be able to get in there. And from Shitra it goes uh, down a smuggling route 
from Pakistan into Afghanistan. Back roads, they, you know, no passports, no customs checks. They, you know, even the, 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 the idea of a nation uh, really didn't catch on in these tribal areas. So, yeah, they get down there with their um, mules laden with hashish. And the story moves up to Kandahar and Herat. Major scenes in both those cities, Kandahar Peace Ali Hotel, Herat, uh, the Bayzad Hotel, run by Bay. And then a new thread enters the story. It's where Pasha is finishing up his book reading tour in Amsterdam, Hippie History of Hashish, and he teams up with Silk and Foxy, who's bought a, a, a VW van, old hippie van. Some hippies brought it back from India, and they sold it to him at Dam Square and about their trip to Munich and to Istanbul. So, in, in general, it looks like the characters kind of regroup. There's a major crossing of characters. Pasha's coming in from Amsterdam. Safo's coming up from Lesbian Island. They meet on the airplane in Thessaloniki and team up there. Seen in Istanbul. Uh, yeah, and uh, after this kind of Asian scene, major chapter in the Greek islands called Assassin Yacht uh, to the Greek islands of specifically Crete, the hippie scene there in the 60s, the hippie catacombs of Matala, major chapter. And it's refreshing. You've been in Islamic zones and then suddenly, how, oh, you know, kind of European, uh, Christian Greek. Uh, environment. Oh, now, like I say, everybody kind of regroups, crosses paths in Istanbul, and then they go on a road trip. Sphinx is the son of the Egyptian ambassador to Turkey. He gets the loan of a diplomatic Rolls Royce, and uh, with Safo and Pasha in the back seat, he's headed off for Cappadocia because his guru. Omar, the dust master, is dying in, uh, in one of the catacombs. Also, the girl was of his father, Tutankhamun, so he's uh, driving all night, get to the, the catacombs there in Cappadocia, too, so he can be by the bedside of his dying guru. Yeah. Well, then uh, <coughs> the, scene, the scene shifts back. Uh, to Kandahar and Herat. Um, more characters. Uh, they kind of regroup again in Kandahar and Peace Ali's Hotel. Pasha and Safo join them. Earthman and Cleopatra, also minor characters, are, uh, enter the story there. And finally, from Afghanistan. It goes back to back roads uh, from Jalalabad up the Konar River, up and over the Dora Pass, and to Garm Cheshmach, this beautiful hot springs where everybody has a beautiful bath, sexy, lovely bath, and, and uh, then it ends up with a celebration. Kipling, Sphinx, uh, King Sharif uh, on the balcony, and uh, Sphinx brings up some fireworks and just blows everybody away. They've never seen them before. Okay, that's kind of the, you know, uh, geographical storyline. And finally, to wrap this up, uh, the ethnic focus is the Islamic zone uh, culture, uh, except for minor scenes in Amsterdam, Munich, and the Greek islands. Uh, besides that, all set in Islamic cultures. Major themes, uh, freedom. Freedom to be who you are. Freedom to find out who you are by fooling around, playing around. And uh, it shows that world travel, mixing with people humbly, living with them, sleeping with them, um, getting rides from them. Uh, it expands your awareness. You may have started out as a ethnic national, 
which, you know, 95% of the world still is. I mean, it's like, uh, but from the travel, it heightened your awareness. Uh, uh, you transcend the severe limitations. <laughs> like, uh, you know, I'm English and that's it. Better get used to it. You know, uh, so British soccer. You know, you you grow up into a global planetary identity. This is the main context of the entire 19-hour performance. It's to see various characters grow like that and shift to an Earthistani self-image of being a free and tolerant Earth person. From time to time, not too often, but because she's really shy, my Afghan girlfriend, F Fatima F Shahrazad, appears, uh, we, we chat once in a while. She helps me with these performance pieces. Uh, she just lost her job as an interpreter for the Americans at the Bagram Air Base. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, President Biden just pulled the troops out of there. Just took him 20 years to figure it out. And the Afghans are really upset, especially the Taliban. They have no, 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 no more uh, people to shoot at. You know, the Russians were good. They were slow. The Americans were a little quicker, so they had more fun shooting them. And uh, Fatima, did you, did you manage to get my breakfast together just before I... Oh, thank you. Thank you. Oh, just a second. Oh. Enjoy Earth is sand. May it make you rebel. See how worthy you are to have a free life. It's free, a gift to you. Namaste.